Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on Fortran programming. Now, if you guys notice, we were in the last program, we were in the last video, we were continuing about uh, we were doing a program called a successive factorials using nested do loops, and uh, we we stopped here. Okay, and this this is actually a direct continuation of that video. Okay, let's begin this video. Let's start. Uh, let's start straight away. Now, now. What advantage of Fortran and other programming languages is that they allow you to uh, they allow you the operation of nested they allow you the nested operations meaning you can place a loop or a decision statement inside another loop or another decision statement and mix and matchingly. For instance, I am writing this entire stuff in do loop, okay, the entire thing in do loop, and inside this do loop I can invoke another do loop, okay, and then you know uh, end it here. And inside this do loop, what I can do is that I can in, I can insert another one do loop and uh, end it and uh, close another do loop like this. So what happens is that inside this do loop I can insert another do loop and inside this I can do another loop do loop. So this is like this is what you call as nested loop nested feature nested looping. Okay, one loop inside the other. And this kind of nested feature uh, looping is actually pretty much essential when you guys do something like uh, matrix averaging or uh, matrix multiplication or dot product formulation and stuff and so on okay as of now we don't need a uh, third do loop we just need only two uh, two of it so let's begin here in this in the for this do loop you again need an iterator variable just like what you have above and this iterator variable is and this i wait variable is j and this value changes between i i mean 1 2 i not n but 1 2 i Okay, and now inside, what I'll press, what I'll do is that uh, I will, you know, I will increment the fact, I'll change the fact value, and I said set, set it equal to fact into j. Fact equals fact into j. Now what, uh, now what this happens is that this will, int this will multiply the g already given value of fa a fact with uh, j and then stores that new updated value to the original value as like this for in, uh, this is how this is how it goes now I'll explain you guys a little clearly what how the factorial is going on now if you guys notice factorial is actually the consecutive multiplication of n integers for an nth number so for 6 it's a con consecutive multiplication of n, int n uh, 6 integers from the beginning okay now this is how the program goes okay up to here uh, up to here the program just define you just define a few variables you get the value of n and that's it now this concentrate on this do loop okay initially the do loop starts with i equals 1 okay and we go inside and the we are, uh, fact is assigned to 1 and then we go into this do loop in this do loop if j is uh, initially assigned as 1 okay with j being 1 fact is 1 we go inside and there is this one condition only one statement here now fact equals fact into j now fact is 1 and this j is 1 so 1 into 1, one times 1 is 1 and this 1 stores here and this iteration ends now i gets incremented by a neg i gets incremented to a j gets incremented to the other value 2 but is, is 2 greater than 1 yes so this this do loop breaks this do loop breaks and it and this do loop breaks and this uh, this comes out of the loop and the next value what happens is that i gets incremented by 2 i increments by one value and i becomes 2 and then it checks whether the i is greater than n greater than n and uh, if not it will goes in again the fact is reassign the value 1 and it starts this do loop again and this in this do loop j starts from 1 okay because this loop this loop terminated and it's restarting so j equals 1 and this time j va j uh, values lie between 1 and 2 so it so this loop will uh, execute twice so j equals 1 and it goes inside fact the fact is already set to 1 so 1 times 1 is 1 it goes like this and sees and it, it comes here and then goes back now j equals 2 is it still less than or equal to i yes it is so it goes again now what happens is that a fact is all because of the previous iteration fact is set to be two, uh, set to be 1 okay now j is 2 so j time uh, 1 times 2 is 2 and this 2 is getting stored and uh, fact becomes 2 from 1 fact becomes 2 and after this i gets incremented by one value uh, it's 3 when since this is 3 is greater than the i this loop breaks and comes out 
and when now here i gets incremented to the value 3 3 and now with i being 3 fact is set as 1 fact is set as 1 and j is j is reset this j do loop j this this do loop uh, is reset and it's it now with the values of j will range from 1 to 3 1 2 will be 1 2 and 3 so this loop will run thrice for the for the first iteration j fact is 1 j is 1 so you get the fact to be 1 and the store gets stored here in the second iteration j becomes 2 fact is 1 j is 2 so 1 times 2 is 2 and it gets stored here and the third iteration j is 3 so because of the previous iteration fact is 2 and the j value is 3 so it's 2 2 times 3 is 6 and 6 gets stored here and uh, with that with that this loop breaks and comes out this loop breaks and comes out and so on and so forth and so on and so forth and uh, this continues up till the until j uh, i becomes i becomes you know equal to n after the after the iteration with i equals n does okay the i loop i will get incremented to a value higher than n by one unit and then this entire loop breaks and we come out and that being said the factorial if you guys notice is nothing but uh, the fact here so what what I wrote is the factorial factorial of i factorial of i is actually nothing but the number is okay comma fact now if you go if you guys don't believe me watch okay I compile this compile compile this uh, and I build this and I execute this let me just enter the value phi perfect the factorial of 1 is 1, the factorial of 2 is 2, the factorial of 3 is 3, 3 is 6, the factorial of 4 is 124 and that of 5 is 120. As simple as that. And it works fine. Perfect. And now, you guys notice, I told that uh, when i gets incremented to a value greater than n, okay, the loop breaks down. Now, to prove you guys that the loop does break down, let me just print the value of i here. Print the star comma i equals okay, I'll just use a small i i equals i now if I just compile this, build this and execute this ok I just type 5 ok now if you guys notice i is indeed 6 so this this in increment happens 6 times uh, let's see from the value it happens kind of 5 times ok to start, to start with and that's it, that is it you guys, uh, your guys have come successfully completed your successor factorial program. Now, the last thing before I end this program uh, is that I wanted to tell you guys about labels, but I think this is getting a little too long. And uh, I'll tell about labels in the next tutorial. And that's a very that's a very short one of it. And then we'll go jump into the switch case statement, and then we'll jump into some other important f features of the program. Okay, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.